uh, maybe the last one did. So let's see how this one goes, and uh, hopefully it's going all right. So I thought we'd um, have a bit of a chat about um, you know a few tips with towing off-road camper trailers, whether it be through the high country or wherever you're going to go, because after I posted that recent video um, last week when I towed my off-road camper trailer through the Vic High Country from La Cola across the Mansfield side, I've had a number of people have sent me messages asking, you know, how do you think they would go towing the camper trailer setup that they've got loud and clear. Love that. Love to hear it's coming through good. Um, yeah, so they've been um, uh, asking those questions whether, you know, how they reckon they would go towing the camera trailer setup they've got through, you know, that that same country, that same trip that I did and through other parts of the Vic High Country. So let's have a bit of a yarn about, um, you know, a few tips because it comes down to a lot of things as to, you know, if you're going to talk about towing a camper trailer uh, sort of off-road and, you know, we will focus pretty much on the high country, but you can take this wherever you're going to go. Uh, Terry and Torrin Lee, good on you guys. Thanks very much there. Max, thanks very much, guys, there coming there tonight. Um, so we're going to go through quite a few tips with, you know, pretty important ones um, when it comes to towing a cam trailer off-road. So we'll get into them, but um, I want to really focus this also just on camper trailers, so not necessarily off-road caravans. Totally different ball game. You know, when you're talking these off-road caravans, so we're really just going to focus it on the off-road camber trailer. So sort of, you know, sort of anything under that sort of two-ton range, um, anything over that, well, it's a whole different game on where you're going to go and where you can and can't go necessarily with off-road caravans. So let's focus it just on the camber trailer. So we'll get into the first one. And look, a lot of these tips too will be pretty relevant for, you know, anything, whether you're towing or not. But when it comes to towing a, a camber trailer, um, behind your, your full drive, the all your research and planning and everything else steps up big time uh, to get through safely and, and do all your planning. So the first one really is, you know, make sure you research the areas you're going to go into and research them big time and get as much advice on the tracks you're going to go rather than just, you know, hooking up your camera trail and heading willy-nilly down a track and who knows where you're going and what you're going to be heading in for and how steep a country. So, you really want to step up that research and ask as many questions as you can, try and find out as much information on the area you're going to go and the tracks you're going to do with steepness and, you know, conditions and those sort of things because, yeah, it steps up tenfold when, you, when you've got, you know, anything up to, you know, one and a half tonne to maybe two tonne or just under, um, hanging off the back of your full drive. So make sure you do your research is certainly a big one. And as I mentioned in in that video that I posted there the other week with, um, with my um, trip across uh, the trip that I did. Tire pressures is a big one. And again, tire pressures is very important when it comes to any sort of full driving, but it's also really important when you've got a trailer hanging off the back. And as I, as I mentioned in that video, that I was running 18 PSI in the front. I ran 25 PSI in my back tires of my full drive, where normally I would run probably, you know, 18 to 20. But because of the extra weight that's, um, you know, hanging off the back of my full drive there, I put another 5 PSI, left of another 5 PSI in the back tyres, and then also drop the tyre pressures down on my cam trail as well. And, you know, you probably ask why you let those down, because there's no drive going to those wheels. But it's mainly, again, just a, a comfort factor, and, and it just allows that, that cam your camera trailer to, you know, to not get jumped around and bumped around and all the rocks and bumps and wherever else you're going. It just makes it travel a lot smoother as well and less chance of doing damage to the camper trailer, your your own vehicle, uh, suspension components. So dropping your tyre pressures down on your camper trailer is also really important. So make sure you do, do all that sort of stuff. And this is absolutely another big one. Again, I've mentioned this so many times with a lot of my videos, and that's carrying a chainsaw now. Again, carry a chainsaw whether you're towing or not, but also when you are towing, you really got to make sure you've got a chainsaw on board because you, you just never know. You know, you could be heading down a track and, you know, um, the only way of getting through um, is going to be cutting a char, you know, cutting your way through and clearing that track so you can get yourself through. Um, other than that, if you can't get yourself through, in, you know, then you're going to have to maybe be able to turn around and, that's not that's easier said than done sometimes, you know, if you've got to be able to turn yourself around. And now how are you going to go about doing that? Well, one thing with mine, it is pretty light. 
So if I got to a, you know, a, somewhere on a track where there was either tree down or a wash away or something like that, um, if I couldn't continue any further, well, you know, my only option there is to, if I can't turn around or can't reverse back to somewhere, I've got to unhitch it. And mine's pretty light, so I'm quite easy able to do that. So I'd just be able to unhitch it and then, um, you know, get both of us turned around, get my vehicle turned around, get the cam trailer turned around, rehitch it, and then going to have to go back to the same way I've come in. And then, you know, look for another way around if that's a worst case scenario. So you've got to make sure you're going to be able to be able to do that. Um, I can push mine here yeah, quite easy, even with, you know, when it's fairly well loaded, I can still push it quite comfortably, you know, to where I need it to go. So unhitching it is certainly a, a good option with going forward there. And this is an absolute must, an absolute big one with towing anything, uh, taking your camera trailer, and that's been able to reverse it, been able to back it up because, um, you know, and you've got to be super confident and be able to do that, um, you know, and if you're not, well, you really need to practice reversing, you know, your trailer potentially over long distances. Like I've got no issues in backing my trailer. I, I work with tractors and trailers every day of the week. So, and I've got to reverse those up all the time with the work that I do. And so backing a camera trailer up does not phase me in one, one way or the other. So, You've got to make sure you are very confident with backing a camp trailer up because you could have to, you know, you might have, again, tree down. You might be able to back up 50, 100 metres, 200 metres to a spot, be able to turn around, or, you know, you might have a vehicle or a convoy coming towards you um, where it might be a better option that you may be able to back up a few metres to get off the track to let them through and then you can continue you on your trap. But reversing up, Farrow, it is so important that you know how to reverse up a camper trailer. Where's it going on here? I wonder if any, how many of you guys, um, did you go through a lot of more fuel? Well, that's an interesting one there, mate. Because um, I was a bit unsure. Because um, I my patrol carries, i got 120 litres of standard. Now, if I wasn't towing, I wouldn't have taken extra fuel. I would have just put my 120 litres in and would have covered that trip. No worries. Would have got to Mansfield. No worries at all. So I was a bit unsure with how I was going to go with fuel, so I did take an extra 20-litre jerry can. But as it turned out, I didn't need it. I still got across the other side, and I went up through Craig's Hut as well before dropping out into Mansfield. So, um, yeah, I still got through no worries with the 120. I got through with plenty still. Um, so I didn't really need to use that jerry can. But, again, you know, if you're better off taking a jerry can of petrol, diesel, whatever you've got to put in it, because uh, you're far better off having plenty rather than have to get halfway through your trip and, you know, your your orange light comes on to say you're low on fuel and you still got a fair way to get out. Uh, yeah, you're far better off taking it, have plenty, then go looking for it. So, yeah, that's um, that's a good one there, mate. Um, yeah, I uh, I didn't have an issue with, with towing uh, with, with fuel on that trip. Um, but, again, so, you know, I did did take one just, just in case. Um, and, yeah, I've mentioned that about unhooking. And then... One good thing with, with a camper trailer, you know, I mean, you, you do see some some uh, videos where people do tow camper trailers through some pretty crazy country, you know, pretty crazy tracks and all this sort of stuff. And um, But one thing I sort of like about your camper trailer is, you know, tow it off-road, you know, tow it to a remote spot, you know, whether it be down by a mountain river or something like that or base it up where, you know, where I did. You know, I was up there at 1500 or there the other week and, Feeding them is a bloody amazing spot. Um, but base camp up rather than trying to tow your camera trailer through some steep, nasty country because um, far better off doing that, like, you know, take Dargo area, for example, you know, base camp up down there at Talbotville or in the spots just out of Dargo down there and base camp up there for two or three days and then, you know, do your trips in and out without your trailer on and, you know, do your blue rags and your billy goats and keep coming back and forth and come back to a really nice setup because, Again, while I'm on the subject of Billy Goat, um, I've had quite a few people sort of asking me about that. You know, how do you reckon you'd go towing that camper trailer up Billy Goat? Well, that camper trailer would handle Billy Goat, no worries at all. But I can tell you now, it's not a track I'm going to tow tow anything up up or down Billy Goat. Billy Goat, in my, my view, is just not a camper trailer track at all because, you know, your vehicle works damn hard enough, especially going up, works damn hard enough as it is without, um, you know, another half, you know, one and a half ton hanging off the back of it. So, yeah, I'm just not into that sort of stuff at all. It's not what I bought it for, to go and do crazy, ridiculous tracks just to prove a point that I can tow up it. Um, that's not what I've got it for. So, yeah, um, towing up Billy Gate, yeah, just 
bloody crazy, I reckon, to do any of those sort of big, big, steep, nasty tracks with a, you know, cam trail hanging off the back of it. Uh, Steve there, welcome to Off-Road Camber Cram Crew. Thanks very much, mate. I tow a OP4. Great rig. No worries. Uh, hopefully that works for you there, mate, and you got pretty confident in towing it. But, yeah, as you say, you know, you, you do need to be you know, confident with towing in any sort of terrain. You know, you, you've got to be really comfortable with, with towing your camera trailer in, uh, if you're going to look about going somewhere off-road. Um, okay, that's great, great tip about the rear tyre pressures towing, uh, towing your trailer. Yep, no worries here, Ray. I'm glad you found that helpful there, mate. And, yeah, it's certainly... Um, Certainly, you put keep, like, keep a few extra PSI in the back tyres if you pull drive, just because that extra weight. I think my ball weight, when it's hanging on the back, is around sort of that 80, 90 odd k. It's not a lot um, compared to some, you know, some setups where the ball weight can be pretty heavy, and you know, and that ball weight is loaded onto you know your back of your all drive there. So, you know, so that's another reason why I do you know leap leap that extra five PSI in it, and the back tyre is still bagged out a fair whack with it. Um, with that extra 5 PSI in it, just purely because of that extra load of 80, 90-odd kilo that's hanging on the back of it there. So, yeah, well worth keeping them up. Yeah, and um, Tyron, how you going there, mate? Uh, the reduction gear set up must have helped. And uh, as I mentioned again in that video uh, the other week, uh, I've mentioned my reduction gears a lot, how amazing they are, and it yeah, absolute tenfold uh, the difference that they made with, um, with Towen. Uh, that trip I did there the other week, the reduction gears are just an amazing thing. Um, so if you are looking to maybe do a fair bit of off-road, um, pulling a camera trailer through that sort of country, uh, reduction gears are just an amazing thing. Um, I was still, you know, in, in first gear, still not using the brakes very little or very rarely at all, if at all, um, even going down some of those steeper sections. Uh, the first gear in my four drive with the reduction gears, that 42 odd percent, whatever it is, um, it's feeling amazing so yeah it really do does help and you know then it's a lot of a lot of stress off your brakes you're not on your brakes which is the last thing you want is you know be going down steep hills uh in in first gear low range and you're still getting pushed um last thing you want to do is go get brake fade and on your brakes too heavy and you start burning them out and they start getting hot and then you're in all sorts of trouble if you've got an extra one and a half odd two ton pushing down the hill as well so reduction gears are really handy for that type of uh, that type of um, scenario that's for sure um got a bit of a uh, bit of sun <laughs> yeah i did get a bit sunburned actually it was quite hot over easter but yeah it did get pretty warm pretty warm there chris um one my one my thing um where'd you go um is do reverse yeah you gotta make sure you can reverse your camera trailers mate really important um the reduction gears yep uh lee what about extra bre braking on the on the camera trailer itself um, that's another good point there too, and I've got a uh, pretty good electric brake system on mine. I've got the um, that um, Red Arc Tow Pro pack on mine, and I can I can have it a, a totally manual, where you know, or can have it running automatically, which which I do most of the time when I'm out there on the road, and and I pretty much run it automatically all the way through there. So, but you can um, hit the button on that Tow Pro pack, and you can adjust more brake pressure to the back of the camper trailer as you know, to what's being applied to the front. So it's quite a quite a good good setup. But um, yeah, I just ran that automatic and all the way through, just left on setting, I think setting four, I think I've got it set on and just ran that all the way through that trip the other week. No worries at all. So I didn't bother playing around with uh, extra brake pressure um, on the camper trailer with that setup I've got, but very handy if you can do that. So look into a good electric brake system. Um, for your, for your trailer and uh, get those brakes working well. It's certainly a good thing. Uh, with the weight of the of the trailer there, how was the river crossing any sideways movement? Now, look, Eric, the rivers um, last week, the other week there, were very low. No issues at all on getting through any of the river crossings there um, over that trip. But, you know, that could change. <laughs> that could change at any time, you know, and this is probably one of my next tips is, um, is talking about the weather, you know. Again, you need to research the weather really, really well any time of year, even if, whether you're towing or not. But again, now we're talking about weather and you've got next year, you know, a camera trail hang, hanging off the back. Well, weather planning is is really vital because um, you wouldn't want to get somewhere and then find out it's going to start raining, um, you know. And then you've got uh, big dramas here on getting out or, you know, down steep hills or up steep hills or whatever. But, yeah, weather planning is really, really important um, when you're going to have a trail on the back. But 
One trip I do probably want to do, which I'd be probably pretty comfortable in taking that trailer into, and that's into Wanagata. I've been asked a few times about that, and I'd tow that trailer in and out of Wanagata, no worries at all. I'd take down um, from the top of La Cola there and then take down Zika. Um, yeah, I'd take down there, no worries. Again, weather permitted, I would not certainly go down Zika with a trailer on the back um, if it's going to be raining. So it'd be a bit of forward playing there, but yeah, I'd like to try and get into one and get it with the trailer on um, before the season's out, but that's getting pretty close. So maybe the next month or so, but we'll have to see how we go with that one. Otherwise I might leave that one until later in the year because yeah, it'd be, I'd be no worries on taking my trailer down into one and get Unlike your old swag that uh, that fell off your <laughs> off your roof, let's hope that you don't lose the camp trailer. Yeah, that was a fair while ago, and I lost that swag, and that was on that same road going into La Cola. But yeah, with the camp trailer, just check, check, check. Even, you know, before you leave camp, once you've hooked him up, you know, once you've once you've hooked it up, do your walk arounds, make sure everything's all your doors are all locked and uh, all that sort of stuff. But check, check, check your chains, make sure your hitch is all hooked on properly, your brakes are all working right. Check it two or three times if you have to, but um, but yeah, make sure you do get that right. And I do have also with that reverse camera I've got uh, with the screen inside my full drive. Um, I've got a button there that I can push there at any time, and I can have a, that the camera is looking down at my hitch. So even when I'm driving up the highway, you know, I can hit that button. I can have a look and make sure everything's everything's going all right and everything's uh, where it needs to be. But yeah, do check your hitches. Really important to make sure that. All your chains, all your D shackles, those sort of things are all hooked up good and proper. You know, cross your chains over, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, make sure that they're all right. Here, yeah, being asked about billy goats. Um, this is another one we've been talking about tire pressures before, which um, you have to pump your tires up at some stage, uh, not only just on your full drive, but you're also going to have to pump the tires up on your cam trail as well. So, you need to make sure that the hose that you've got. Is going to be long enough to reach your camper trailer, which mine was. Mine does. It calls out, no worries, that I can reach the two tyres on the camper trailer quite easily. So make sure that you do your hoses long enough, um, you know, where you can pump the tyres back up on your camper trailer when your trip's over, getting back out of the bitumen again, and you're going to start heading home. So make sure you've got them, you know, you can reach your tyres on your uh, on your camper trailer. Yep, using low range first gear is is vital. You know when you're anywhere when you're going down any sort of steep gradient with a trailer on the back, and uh, hopefully yeah you're not going to be on those brakes too much even in first gear because um, you know when you're not towing, um, you know now you've got an extra one and a half ton on, on the back, you still could get a fair bit of push. So yeah, just be really careful with um, with your brake use and use that first gear low range all the time when you're going down any sort of steep gradients. Look, I did that whole trip right across here. Look at, you know, that whole trip, that trip across, um, you know, Bluff, you know, Howard High Plains and then onto King Billy and then down to Bluff Track, that sort of thing. It's not really a hard, hard track at all. Um, it's just slow going. It's damn slow. Like that King Billy is really rough and in spots quite rocky in spots. So, you know, you got to take your time and, and walk your way through some of those rocky sections. And, uh, yeah, but it's not an overly hard trip to do, but uh, just take your time. That's the thing. Just no rush with getting through any of that sort of country. Uh, Staff your brakes. Um, if you're going to go yeah, deep in the mountains, make sure you, your weather. Yeah, the weather's probably key. Make sure your yeah, weather's going to be right. Uh, what about the extra braking on the camera trail itself? We covered that one. Uh, I never would have imagined a rough, rugged, Bushman now living in luxury. Well, yeah, I've had a few people mention this about that. I will still keep using my swag, but I can tell you now, with a, I've been away for two weeks over Easter and I went away for two weeks or nearly three weeks uh, over Christmas. I can tell you now, there is no way knowing I'm going to get away for a couple of weeks now and and beyond, which is going to be heading to Flinders Ranges in somewhere June, July, somewhere around there for three odd weeks. There's no way knowing I'm going to do that in an 85 centimetre swag that I can't stand up in. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a uh, bit, little, certainly a little bit of extra comfort for me. Um, you know, there's no doubt about that, and it's got absolute game changer. And you know, and the other big one is is when I'm doing my editing. You know, now I've got somewhere to sit at night because a lot of those solo trips that you've seen where I've been out there in my swag, I can be still sitting in the front seat of my full drive there if you know if the weather's a bit ordinary or a bit cold. I'm sitting in the front seat of my patrol there, um, charging up batteries unloading, you know, um, 
my, my cards, my, all my footage on the hard drives, on my laptop, sitting in the front seat there trying to do all this, you know, till you know, sometimes pretty late at night. So now I've got somewhere pretty damn comfortable <laughs> to be able to go and do this. So there's a lot of reasons for having the camera trailer, but hey, I'll still use my Mighty Swag. I actually love it to bits. I'm still under canvas, but um, just a bit more of it and a bit more room inside. So, yeah, pretty happy with it. It's pretty amazing. Love it. It's a good thing. Um, been a while. Good to see you back there. Thanks, Matthew, there for coming in there tonight. And Craig, um, did you did your trip uh, of a lifetime? Yeah, you did, you did that trip a lifetime. Yeah, wonderful. Give up uh, another good trip, please. Look, that is a cracking trip, that trip a lifetime through the Victorian Eye Country. You know, the live videos there, you can go and check them all out. You know, it takes you from Dargo right across to Tom Grogan in two parts. Mention all the trips, the tracks, maps, sites, the whole shoot match. And, um, Matthew there's had a uh, really good trip with that one, or Craig's had a good trip with that one. Thanks very much there. Greatly appreciate it, mate. Check wheel bearings regularly. Yeah, Johnny, mate, make sure you check them. Um, yeah, well and truly before you leave home. Wheel bearings are one of those things I think that gets forgotten about a little bit. Um, so, yeah, wheel bearings. Are, luckily, mine are all brand new right now because I've just recently changed the stud pattern on it. So I went from five stud uh, to now six studs, so it matches my patrol. My wheels and tyres are all the same, all gone through. So I've got brand new wheel bearings, brand new hubs, the whole shoot match on the camera trailer. So hopefully they should be all right for a little while going forward. There's no doubt about that. First sign of old age. Well, I'm not sure if you guys realise, but, <laughs> you know, I'm uh, not getting any younger. I'm, I'm 60 this year, about turned well, 60 at the moment. I'm about turned 61, so... You know, I've done it fairly damn hard and fairly uh, fairly rough for many years um, sleeping on the ground, and I'll still sleep on the ground occasionally, but I'm more than comfortable in this, um, more than okay with uh, pulling my camp trail around with some of these big trips we're going to do coming up, and you guys will get to see them all as we go. G'day, mate. Cheers uh, to Westy, Westy's uh, Aussies in Siberia. Well, Where that sort of Saudi Arabia. There you go. They have a look at that. We're going all the way from Saudi Arabia tonight. Thanks very much there, Jim, for dropping in from way over there, mate. Thanks very much. Greatly appreciate it. Carry a swag when you leave your, your base camp. Well, you know, you, you could do that too. You know, you could, if you wanted to, you know, set your trailer up and nick off for a few days without coming back. Well, you could do that too, you know, chuck a swag in. But I probably won't be looking to go probably that extreme where I'm going to nick off and leave my camp trailer set up and not come back for a few days. But, hey, you know, it depends on where you're going and what you want to do. Um, you know, or if you, uh, you know, you might be heading off into through central Australia or somewhere like that up there and you might park your camper trailer up somewhere and leave it, you know, not set up, but just leave it parked up somewhere, somewhere safe. And, and you might take off with your swag and, you know, do some trips and, you know, with just your swag on the roof. You know, that's certainly a, a big option for going through central Australia. Wouldn't do it in our country. Wouldn't really need, have the need for doing that. But yeah, it's going to go the other way, head north way. Um, yeah, you know going to head away for a few weeks to a month, whatever, you might take the swag just for that option. So it gives you an option where you can leave the trailer beyond, completely beyond. Any tips on drying out the canvas quickly? No, really, mate. If, it, if it's wet, uh, yeah, you just got to make sure you get it home and got to be able to set it up. I've got plenty of room at home here where, I, yeah, I can open it up and just leave it set up until whenever it's dry. But, yeah, you, it's just like the same with your swag. You don't want to leave them packed up. Uh, if they're wet, you got to make sure you get them out so they can air out, dry out, and same with these with your camera trailers. If you if you've got a canvas one, yeah, you've got to make sure you do do set it up. That's about the only only way you can. There's no real fast way of doing it. Just got to let you know the air and Mother Nature and the sunshine dry it out for you over whatever time it takes. But yeah, don't pack them away for long periods of time. You know, maybe a day or so tops. But um, get it get it out as quickly as you can when you get home, and hopefully you've got enough room around your house where you can. Have it sitting out so it can dry out. Uh, no doubt, speed your speed your seventy. Set spend your seventy out in the bush. Well, I got a few years to go before I get to my seventy there, Eric. And uh, yeah, who knows where I'm going to be when the big seven A comes up? But hey, we'll just take one year at a time for a moment, eh? Let's let's focus on the big six one this year, and uh, yeah, we'll worry about seven A in a few more years to come. Um, g'day, Damo. Thanks very much. Great, appreciate you dropping in there tonight. Uh, Kevin, how you going? I made on 65. Uh, gets the blood blood going and uh, to get up in, and around in these days. Yeah, look, I've got no issues. I can still jump out of bed. No worries. Still jump out of my swag. Still jump out of my camera trailer. No worries at all. Um, yeah, pretty uh, pretty happy with where I'm at 
in uh, how, how it's all going there. But um, but look, there's certainly um, a few tips on going on there, um, and hopefully some of those might have helped you out. You know, if you're looking to you know get get away with your camera trailer and and uh, yeah and and park it up somewhere or, or do do a towing trip with it. Um, but yeah, look, that one that I did there the other week, it's it's a pretty good one to do if you want to go and do a camp trailer trip. But, but yeah, make sure you're still comfortable with doing all that stuff that I've mentioned, you know, and recovery gear and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, winch is certainly handy, particularly if you're going to be towing a, with a trailer on the back. Um, yeah, winch can be certainly very handy with getting you up and out of some situations you might find yourself getting stuck into because... You know, you're not only got to get your full drive out now, but you've got to get your camera trailer through as well. So winch is very handy. So make sure you've got all the recovery gear for that. But, uh, but yeah, my, my best tip is, yeah, base camp it up, I reckon. Don't go fending them. Don't go do anything stupid, really steep, nasty stuff. You're not trying it. There's no, no points get proven um, with going and doing all that sort of stuff. you got more chance of, you know, busting your, your full drive, busting your camera trailer, and then you're in a uh, world of trouble if you're out really out somewhere nasty and that goes and happens, then you, how are you going to get both of those out? So it costs you an absolute bomb. So it's just not worth taking the risk on doing steep, nasty tracks. But do your homework if you don't know an area and make sure that you're not driving into something like that um, where it's going to be way out of your pay grade on what you're comfortable in driving in. Um, but, yeah. That trip I did the other week, absolute cracker, through amazing country. And then where I camped up there the other night at 1,500-odd, bloody beautiful spot under the snow gums there. Lucky I had right weather. Uh, the weather was amazing. And, uh, yeah, so that's where you can get to places with a camera trailer and look, you can easily park up there for two, three days and just sit there and enjoy the scenery if you can luck lucky enough to get that spot. And that's not picture point. People, a lot of people think that is picture point. Um, but picture point is still further up up the track from where I was. Probably be another K still further up. There's a little sign on the side of the track there, uh, which is picture point, which I showed you in that video. So yeah, don't confuse yourself that that is picture point. Even though as nice as it is, the view is amazing. But when you get up to picture point, yeah, it's it's a next level amazing when you get up there. Who else we got going on here? Uh, Live bucket list uh, for sure is Craig's Hut, mate. Yeah, love the channel. Thanks very much. Here, look, Craig's Hut. I didn't stay up there with the trailer, but I certainly towed it up there. No worries at all. Now, I was contemplating uh, maybe taking it over um, Mount Sterling, but there's, you know, some new signage going up there now where they don't recommend towing over Mount Sterling, and I sort of kind of get it because it's um, there is a couple of steep pinches in that and some quite some rocky sections as well. So... You know, when you when you do see these these tracks, Monument was another one. When I got to the base of Monument track after coming up Bindere track, uh, Monument was another one where they got signs there recommending that you don't tow up Monument track. And uh, so yeah, so do heed those those signs when you do see them, and think twice about it. Um, it's probably not a good idea, not not a good sign, not a good uh, message to go putting across when there's signage there saying not recommended to tow it up, and then you go and tow it up there and you get go and bust an axle or something like that on your trailer or do some damage to your full drive or yeah, it's not going to look real good is it so yeah do look into those signs when you do see them because there's a couple there around that craig's hut area and um but yeah to tow it up to craig's hut there's no worries and you could quite easily i could quite easily set it up down there that big open area up there at craig's and then you know kick back up and enjoy it really up there because craig's hut is a really nice spot to camp up i've stayed up there quite a few times and it's amazing how many people don't stay up there always come up there, you know, for the day and have lunch up there and, you know, enjoy the views while they're having their lunch. But, God, it's amazing that people just go up there and they come back down again and don't stay up there. But it is a cracking spot if you can get up there and there's not many people up there. Really, really nice spot. Highly recommend camping up there at Craig's. It is fair and stunning. Love it up there. Especially for your sunrises and, uh, well, sunrises are, are absolutely amazing coming through the back of the hut where they come through there. Well worth getting up there and having a look. Um, it's outdoors, green from South Dakota, far out. Here we go in the US. We got we're going <laughs> we're going global tonight. How good is this? Enjoy the channel. Thanks for all your videos. Greatly appreciate you jump, jumping there tonight, mate. Thanks very much. We're going everywhere tonight. Unreal. Um, Jim, uh, any updates on the proposed full drive tracks? Uh, not sure. Oh, full drive tax. 
not sure what that's all about, mate. I don't know any four-wheel drive tax that's going on with there. Um, but yeah, not sure about that. Uh, when are you plan on doing the Flinders, mate? Demo, I'm looking to probably go June, July, somewhere around there. I haven't really finalised dates as yet. Um, but, yeah, it'll be somewhere around there. Probably not a bad time of year to go. Weather should be pretty good um, to go up around the Flinders for that time of year. And generally it's pretty cold and wet down here. So, um, yeah, so it would be somewhere around there, June, July, and then back for the Melbourne Fall Drive Show in August. So be somewhere around there, I reckon, mate, but not quite sure I'll finalise dates um, when I'm going to do that. Uh, what places on the Murray River to go camping? Well, I've got a few videos there if you want to check those out, Elliot, um, on place to go, the endless places where you can go camping on the Murray River. But uh, I've got a couple of videos there where I camped up near, uh, where was that, up near Robinvale. And then another spot down towards Swan Hill. I had two spots there. Thing, absolutely beautiful spot. So check those couple of videos out, mate. And, um, yeah, really quite easy to get into. That second one, as I headed towards Swan Hill, was a long way in, though, uh, off the main road, pretty remote. But that one, um, that first one, um, yeah, where I camped just out of Robinvale, that's not far off the main road at all, but a really nice spot on the Murray River. And, and just getting back to when I talk about weather, to really take on board the weather, <clears throat> And uh, heed the weather, this next video that I'll have hopefully finished uh, in the next week or two, because um, that's one of the other trips that I did over Easter, went up into the Kosciuszko National Park, and yeah, the weather turned absolutely foul on um, on that first night. Now, I had to be out the next day, but watch the video and you'll see what, what ends up, what end up doing with that. Because, uh, yeah, when the weather turns nasty, and I was at high elevation there too at 1,300 odd, um, when the weather turns nasty, yeah, I, I certainly listen to the weather, and particularly when, again, when towing, I had the camper on the back. Um, so, yeah, I uh, put some pretty drastic action into that video. So you'll see that in the next, hopefully, be up next week or week after I'll have that one finished as well. But uh, crack and spot. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, thanks, brother. I'll, uh, I'll message you, and don't mind if um, I'm back on back in your yard. Net. No worries there, mate. You can do that at all i agree with billy gates uh don't tow full stop yeah look tb yeah mate yeah you certainly see people that do tow in ridiculous tracks like that um but yeah not ideal at all uh can tow down king hut easy enough yeah look absolutely you get down in king hut um again really no worries at all but even some of these two uh, these quite easy roads like speculation road and circuit road and and those sort of things, you know, when they're dry, you know, they're a piece of cake. And um, but you know, get a bit of rain on them, and some of those easy roads can turn into quite slippery little challenges. So, again, just be very careful, you know, in um, with um, some of the steep, some of those, some of those tracks, like getting down the speculation. But King Hut, you drag down a King Hut with a trailer down there, no worries at all. I've seen quite a few people with camper trailers down around the hut and a couple of crossings across there, and, and you know, and they're camping down there with their camper trailers. No worries, it'd be really nice actually camping down through there with a cam trailer. Uh, Ross there, how you going, mate? How's things going, mate? How's the patrol going? How's the patrol going? Well, that's a bit of a thing. Uh, it might be coming off the road for a few weeks in a, in a, very shortly. Looks like the uh, head work might need to be done again for the second time. We're just um, doing a few tests on that at the moment to see what's going on with it. Quite a frustrating moment. Other than that, it drives an absolute troop. <coughs> it um, still drives, no worries at all, but, yeah, I've got some um, coolant issues being spat out through the re reservoir bottle at the moment, so we're doing some tests on potential uh, maybe head gasket might have gone in it again for the second time, which not great news, but anyway, we'll persevere with it. So that's where it's at, but other than that, the Mighty Patrol rolls on with 413,000 Ks on the clock and still going really good. Can you tow um, to the Murray near Swan Hill? I don't know that that spot there, Kevin, but um, you'd have to maybe do a bit of research on that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know that 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 park there at all on the Murray River near Swan Hill, so you'd have to maybe do a bit of research and try and find out from that, maybe ring the info centre in, in Swan Hill. They'd be able, probably able to give you some good information on where you get in there. Uh, Johnny, is it uh, slow going towing from Walhalla through to Woods Point? Um, is, as long as you're on that, just that main Walhalla Woods Point road, again, it's Pretty easy road. It's just slow going, windy, but you'd tow a trailer through there, no worries. Um, yeah, get a car through there, pretty easy. It's, it's just a slow going. Might be a few potholes here and there, but, yeah, pretty slow going. 
Certainly not full drive, steep country at all, but you'd tow through there, no worries. But just long, slow going, pretty slow windy. Um, so, yeah, but you, you'd get through there with no worries. Just be very careful. Again, if it's going to be wet, because that road could be, yeah, would be pretty probably slippery on some of the corners and things. You're chucking high range, full drive, get maximum traction. And, and uh, yeah, it should be probably all right there, mate. But, yeah, just be careful, though, if you're going to tow through there. Try and do Mount Gill Track on the, uh, not sure, oh, on up near the Flinders there. Well, I've got four stations, working stations picked out. Um, I'm going to stay on those and I'm going to film videos of each of the ones that I'm going to stay on. Um, so I'm really looking forward to going to Flinders Ranges because I've never been up that way and I certainly want to start going a bit more that direction. And this, again, it's where the camp trail is going to come really handy for these longer duration trips uh, instead of sleeping on the ground in an 85 centimetre wide swag. So, yeah, but I'll, I'll, uh, I might check that one out, mate, because I don't know that. Mount Gill Track on that station there in the Flinders Ranges, I'll, uh, I'll check that one out, mate. Right, eh? well, I think that um, sort of covers it. If we haven't covered any anything there with uh, any got any you know questions you want further questions about you know with your towing a camera trailer off road, throw them in the comments down below once we finish this video, this chat, and uh, we'll get back and answer them then. But in the meantime, guys, thanks very much for tuning in. Really good questioning there. Great feedback from everyone coming through from there, and uh, <laughs> the few spots where we end up going global around the world. That's unbelievable. Really, really good. Unreal. Good on you, Eric. Thanks so much. Uru, mate. And thanks so much, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. And we'll see you on the next one. Uru. Catch you later on. Down here.